If you run a small business, profits can get squeezed when inventory doesn't match up with production. What can help is a visit to an IBM personal computer dealer. Once you've explained the kind of help you need, a computer expert will show you the system that's right for you, show you how simple it is to get started, and how IBM's easy-to-follow instructions and library of business and management software can help you solve your problems and give you a tool for modern times. The IBM personal computer. Not only can it help you plan ahead, it'll balance your books and give you more time to make dough. And the cost? That's the icing on the cake. Your own IBM personal computer. Try it at a store near you. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris back in Chicago. Looks like the Bucks and the Bears had the same idea in their offense today. And that could be one thing that's wrong in this new day and age of pro football. You've got to throw on first down. This established a run is a bunch of baloney, in my opinion. <laughs> I wish you wouldn't oh. block him. There's an interception by Holt, Johnny Holt, from North, or from West Texas State, intended for Kenny Marjoram, and the ball popped up, probably off his shoulder pads, and Holt makes the first interception of the afternoon, and Tampa Bay has the ball as the Bears threw on first down. <laughs> yeah, they threw on first down, you're right. However, it should have been completed. The pass was right there, bounced right up off his pads and shoulder pads and there is John Holt with the interception Tampa Bay has the ball and that's what you call alert football plan John Cannon says nice catch and goes to throw a block as Holt takes it down finally brought down Tampa Bay has the first big break in the game they're down at the 37 and a half yard line Johnny Holt the third pick in 1981 makes his first interception and uh, getting that uh, starting spot with the injury to Norris Thomas and Neil Colsey saying that uh, Holt gives us a little more speed. He said the rest of us are a little older and slower. It's nice to have some, some speed out there on the corner and Holt. So let's see what the Bucks can do. Goldstein continues at quarterback. He's got a man open. The pass intended for Kevin House is incomplete. It was too low, and House claiming that he scooped it up before it hit the carpet. The officials ruling otherwise. It looked like he may have, may have trapped it. He was open. The pass was a little bit... Uh, down here, but it does look like the ball scoops on the bottom. See, oh, it did yeah. hit the ground. No nice try, of, uh, but it was a nice Kevin. try by Kevin House, who has a little bit of a groin pull. Uh, uh, he strained it in practice, but uh, he seems to be running okay today. And of course, he's had big days against the Chicago Bears. They do fear him. This is James Owen with Mike Singletary in pursuit. Singletary knifed into the backfield and then wound up in a lateral foot race but the running back Owens and Singletary caught up with them. There'll be no gain on the play. Maybe a loss of a half yard. Mike Singletary had a nice chat with him the other day out at Lake Forest, the Bears training camp site. He is such an intense football player. Intense has become a real cliche in uh, sports terminology, but there is a guy that that adjective fits perfectly because Singletary uh, just loves to play. He likes to be a leader. He loves being in the middle. He wants to be the best middle linebacker in football, and he's giving it a good try. Third and 11. Extra defensive backs in for the Bears. They go to Carter, and it is incomplete. Again, it's Walt Williams arriving when the ball did, and Carter is unable once more to hang on on almost identical play to the last time Williams broke it up just moments ago. Now the Bears, they were in a tight formation, so the Bears had their, their extra defensive back, and Williams is a free guy. He's just coming over here to pick up the back. He got screened out for a while, but by the time Goldstein could get the ball out there, here comes Walt Williams to bounce Gerald Carter once again and stop the drive. Fourth down, Frank Garcia has himself another busy afternoon. He's waiting for the snap at the Tampa 50 and Let's fly another high one this time. It gets a Bears bounce and is down by the Buccaneers, number 44, Dwayne Osteen, activated last week with the injury to Mark Cotney, putting him on injured reserve. Osteen back as a Buccaneer. 23-yard punt. We'll be back. 8.58 remaining first half. 
more set, guys? Nah, you guys are just too tough today. For uh, Michelob Light? <laughs> you should have quit while you were ahead. Michelob Light for the win. Would good friends play this hard for a beer? Well, it is Michelob Light, a rich, smooth taste you can compare to any beer you like. Michelob Light for the winners. I don't get it. You guys killed us. <laughs> don't blame us. You suggested we play for a Michelob Light. Michelob Light. Esther, you did send that Federal Express, didn't you? Oh, yes, Mr. Bogus, you're covered. Oh, Ed, you did send that Federal, didn't you? Yes, Fred, we're covered. You sent that thing Federal, didn't you, Nick? Yes, sir. Good, I'm covered. I'm covered. I'm covered. Hey. I'm covered. Are you covered? I'm covered. I'm covered. Are you covered? I'm covered. Are you covered? I think we're all covered. Okay. I'm covered if he's covered. Cover oh, yourself covered. with Federal Express. Why fool around with anyone else? Dennis Weaver, Susan Day, Andrew Stevens, Maud Adams. Monday nights this fall, Emerald Point will set your screen on fire. ...by Dwayne Osteen. In the pro set, Suey and Peyton. Dash legal right, cards room left. Walter Payton, nowhere to go. Now he breaks loose and gets out to the 20-yard line. There's a piece of Walter Payton. Hugh Green was the man to pull him down. He ran into a brick wall of white shirts and somehow got about four out of it, maybe five. Well, I'll tell you what, David Logan and Rhett, the rest of the gang just jammed up. You can't even see Peyton anymore. They might even claim a slow whistle on that baby, but, but Peyton just jammed out there. And, uh, of course, he had uh, number 53, Hugh Green, one-on-one -on -one there, and Green made the tackle. Winds up as a six-yard gain for Walter Peyton, who's up to 33 yards. On the day in the rushing department, second and four from the 20-yard line. Galt and McKinnon now the wide receivers. Peyton again right up the middle, and he will be close to the first down, and depending on where they spot it, he ran through the nose tackle, David Logan. Yeah, that's right, was Logan was right there. Logan was right there. You see Hilgenberg, 63 the center, blocking on Dave Logan. Pretty good stand-up block, but he throws Hilgenberg aside, but by the time he gets himself set, Peyton's on the way through, and you got to get two hands on him, and Logan uh, missed out on that one, but he did jam up the middle. He's always there. You can't knock him down very easily. And, you know, he's one of those nose guards. You know, they take a lot of punishment in there, all those double blocks that we saw, two-time blocks. And I like the way you were campaigning with him yesterday for more money. I mean, you were That's saying right, yeah. nose tackles unite. He liked the sound of that, too. <laughs> it is third and uh, very short. Maybe they should pay them a double salary since they're doing the job of two tackles inside. Boy, that'll, that'll cause some concern in management. Third and very short. Matt Suey to the 25-yard line around the first down marker. Did he get it? Jeff Davis stacked him up, the linebacker, number 58. It looks like he might have it. Scott Brantley got through there and almost stopped him. Number 52 knifed through as they doubled Logan again. But Brantley made the hit, but Suey had too much momentum to get the first down. It is first down for the Chicago Bears out to their 25-yard line. Hildenberg continuing to uh, play at center for Dan Neal, who started. Bears with five first downs to two for Tampa Bay. Neither team has the comment and able to move the football. Deep for golf. Broken up by Mike Washington at the last minute and intercepted. Intercepted by Cedric Brown, number 34, off the tip from Mike Washington, and Brown returns it all the way to the 45-yard line. What an alert grab by Cedric Brown as he picked it off when it had been broken up by Washington, and Johnny Washington looked at just the last second. And credit to Washington, who was step for step with Galt. And here's the end of the play as Galt had himself a step lead, but the pass was a little short. You see he's starting to, to glide because the pass is a little bit behind him. And then Washington just got his hand up there, battered away, and there is Cedric Brown with the interception. Good play by number 34 and number 40. Tampa Bay has the ball, and they have it at the 46-yard line. That's the most excitement we've had since uh, Jeff Fisher's punt catch. We'll be back. Giving that extra effort makes winners. Be all you can be. Sponsored by the U.S. Army. We'll field it at the eight. 
He's to the 10, the 15. Upchurch gets a block. Breaks a tackle at the 35, and he may go. Rick Upchurch is the NFL's all-time punt return leader with nearly 3,000 yards and eight touchdowns. Extra effort at his hazardous job has made Rick Upchurch the best that he can be. A ranger never takes the easy way out. You're reaching deep inside you for things you never know. Go! That's why getting into the rangers is tough and the training is tough. Be all that you can be. So it makes me feel like I'm part of something really special. Be all that you can be. And I'm not the only one. You can do it in the army. 6.39 to go first half. Scoreless football game. Cedric Brown, number 34 out of Kent State, a free agent picked up from Oakland. Makes a dazzling interception, and the Buccaneers have first down and now second after the gain of about three as James Owens, diving straight ahead, got it to the 48-yard line. 26 career receptions for Cedric Brown. Ties him with his teammate Mike Washington in that category on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Actually, Washington should have 26 and a half, wouldn't you say, since he helped, <laughs> he helped out agree. on the interception? He made a good play. The ball did seem to hang there a little bit, and uh, I had given Washington credit for staying step with step with golf, but uh, that really was not the case, as you can see on the replay. Goldstein down the middle for Giles. <laughs> Gary Fensick had that one figured all the way, but could not hang on to the football, but Fensick breaks up the touchdown try to Jimmy Giles. Okay, this is what they've done against the Bears quite successfully with Giles as he goes straight down on an arrow pattern. Todd Bell is the strong safety. Gary Fensick is the free safety. Now you can see if he's hit him a little bit earlier, but the pass hangs, hangs up and 45 comes over from his free safety spot and knocks the ball down. Mike Richardson was there also, so they had him inside, outside, deep. Six defensive backs are in for the Bears on third down. Goldstein, good catch by Carter. Carter with a good move. Gerald Carter, the 10. Gerald Carter, is he in or not? He's out at the one-yard line. Gerald Carter, and what a move he put on Mike Richardson, the rookie from Arizona State, turning him around. And the key was Walt Williams, 43, slipped on his coverage and fell down. And then when Carter came back, he was just getting up off the ground. But that was a key is Gerald Carter. Now, if you watch this pass, now watch Carter turn here and there's 43 getting up that's Walt Williams who slipped on the coverage he would have been there but that's the way football goes he came back against the grain turned on the speed almost got all the way and finally Todd Bell 25 knocks him out of bounds at the one yard line 51 yard play for Gerald Carter from Jerry Goldstein and here is wow wow, wow as he hit by Singletary Mike Singletary and there's somebody underneath as well but it was Singletary they really straighten him up, and it is 98, and that is Tyrone Keyes, the rookie defensive end from Mississippi State, but Mike Singletary really popped him. He certainly did. That's what those linebackers do down on that goal line. Look where Singletary is, way back in the end zone, number 50, and watch, he could come dying. He gets a full head of steam. Here gets Wilder, gets the ball, goes up over everybody, and puts the clamps on Wilder. Second and goal for the Buccaneers. throw set. Goldstein to throw. Has the time. There's the man. No. He was out of bounds. He was out of bounds. It was Melvin Carver, number 28, but he was standing in the white when he caught the ball, so it is incomplete. Third and goal. Actually, what happens, it was the way his feet were when he was in the end zone. He came down on his knees with his toes backwards rather than coming straight down, or he would have had a touchdown. It's just a matter of technique. Because he was clear, he was wide open. The Rollins Frazier come into the Bears defense. Keys and Wouldn't that be something if they had to set up the three points? Three tight ends are in for Tampa Bay on the third down play. Play action. Goldstein trying to run, will not get there. And it was Al Harris, number 90, putting the grab on him and forcing fourth down. Gary Fensick. Right there with him. And the Bears come up with a big defensive play. On 
the quarterback rollout. Mike Hartenstein, number 73, does a good job of turning this back in. And then you're going to see Harris. There's Hartenstein turning Goldstein in. Here comes Harris from the backside and Gary Finzig, 45, on the tackle. And they stop him. They'll set up with three points in that one yard. Gerald Carter's probably talking to himself. If I could have gotten one yard further. Bill Capiz with the field goal try, a 20-yarder, which is good. And so we have our first points of the day. And it came off the interception by Brown, the 51-yard pass play to Carter to the one-yard line. The saving tackle down there by the Bears, Todd Bell, turned out to be a big one. And then Harris doing the job on the quarterback, Goldstein, so it is a three-point margin for Tampa Bay. You know, when you come right down to it, they had four downs. They had three downs to go a yard. If you can't do that, you don't deserve a touchdown, right? True enough. That's probably what John McKay is thinking to himself, although he is saying, well, we're up. We got three. They got zip. 4-10 remaining in the first half. Next week on CBS Sports, our NFL lineup begins for the NFL today, and these Bears will be at New Orleans against Trump Phillips and the Saints. Tampa Bay will be at home to Minnesota as it's a doubleheader afternoon on CBS. The Rams at Green Bay. The Giants at Dallas. Check your local listings for the games and times in your area. Green Bay, meanwhile, as I know we are being seen there today, they are now in front of the Steelers 14 to 13. Lynn Dickey with his second touchdown pass to James Lofton. They've both been bombed, too, Johnny. 71 yards and 73 yards. I think the Packers will have some offense. Franco Harris scored a touchdown for Pittsburgh. Capice with a kickoff here in Chicago. It's taken by Hutchison, the rookie number 32. Hutchison gets to the 22-yard line. Anthony Hutchison before he's pulled down by number 55, Danny Spradlin, reserve linebacker, and Michael Morton, reserve running back, number one. An eight-yard return for Hutchison. John McKay talking things over with the, the coaches upstairs. The Bucks going 53 yards in seven plays, using up 229 on the clock. A 20-yard field goal by Bill Capis, our only points of the afternoon with four minutes to play. First down for the Chicago Bears. Bashnagel moves into the slot left to give us to Suey. Dewey going straight ahead, picks up about four yards over the middle of the Tampa Bay defense. Scott Brantley, number 52, on the tackle. I see that Jay Hilgenberg is playing a lot of center for, uh, for the Bears. Dan Neal is not in there. I don't know if he got an injury. We'll try and find out if there's an injury report on him, but it's been mostly Hilgenberg. As the Bears have not done too much in the way of motion or, uh, you know, a lot of fancy stuff that they have done during the exhibition season. They've been playing fairly conservative so far. Second and five. Play action. Slow developing. McMahon has Peyton wide open. 30 yard line. To the 10. Touchdown. Walter Peyton took two bucks with him for the last 10 yards. Colt and Brown were unable to keep Walter Peyton out of the end zone. A 73 yard touchdown play. What a super run. He got open down the sidelines as the Bears did all kinds of things here on the fakes. They faked an end around reverse with McMahon who held the ball. And you'll see Peyton all by himself. And then he takes it down the sidelines. But you'd never know. He has that stutter step. That was Holt giving a try at him. They tried to hit him high. He goes into the end zone. You cannot hit Walter Peyton high. Cedric Brown tried to hit him high. And he just juked him out, both of them, and went in. Great play. Bob Thomas in for the point after his first action of the day, and it is good. So as the Bucks scored on a field goal, the Bears responded with a 73-yard touchdown play. 77 yards in two plays, the drive, if you can call it that. And the Chicago Bears are on top 7-3. to three. We have 3-12 remaining here in the first half. Walter Payton, he's something else. He's got a great straight arm. He's got great speed, great change of directions, stutter speed. He, he can, you know, shift his speed so well that he can just fake you out. You just don't know what to do. And the strength. We saw Cedric Brown with a grab of his jersey at about the five-yard line. 
And as you pointed out, that isn't going to get it done. You've got to get his feet out from under him, which is not so easy either. But he just showed his strength by just lugging Brown into the end zone. That's the longest touchdown pass against Tampa Bay since 1980, and it comes from a running back, Walter Payton. Perfectly executed play by Jim McMahon, who faked beautifully. Indeed, it seemed to me it was almost too long developing. But as it turned out, when they faked that reverse to Galt, he was just buying more and more time for Payton to get wide open. It just kind of froze the Tampa defense for, sure did. for just a slight moment, and they got a little confused on their coverage. Thomas will kick it off. The deep man for the Buccaneers, Michael Morton, number one, and James Owens, number 26. It is Owens over the 30 to the 41-yard line. An outstanding return for the Buccaneers who quickly get good field possession with lots of time left in this first half. Terry Schmidt on the tackle. 31-yard return. And we just checked the books, and we found out that's the longest pass reception in the history of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers against the Bucks. That one right there. All right. Tampa now from their own 41 yard line. They come out in the I formation, Carter left, house right. Second man is James Owens, and Owens gets two. Otis Wilson, number 55, on the tackle. Second and eight. Well, John McKay's got to be. Wondering about his quarterback situation. Will he do this week what he did last week? Go to Jack Thompson? Uh, is he going to play two quarterbacks uh, forever? Or is he going to? He says they're so equal that uh, it's hard to make a decision, but that he's going to make one here soon. Loose ball right after the pass from center is covered by Goldstein. There'll be no gain on the play. Well, let's take a quick look at a couple of scores from elsewhere as John McKay looks on somewhat disconsolately. Cleveland in front of the Detroit Lions, who were winners over Tampa last week. The Browns leading the Lions 14 to 7. And Dallas St. Louis continues to be a 10 7 football game with uh, the Cowboys trailing in the second period. Ron Springs got the Cowboys on the board. Washington in front of Philadelphia 7 to nothing. And an update on that now 7 to 3 on a Tony Franklin field goal. For Philadelphia. Third down, and the two minute warning has sounded here in Chicago. It'll be third and a long eight when we return to Soldier Field with the Buccaneers in possession at their own 43 yard line, trailing in the football game with two minutes to play in the half, seven to three. I'm Danny White of the Dallas Cowboys, inviting you to a special celebration. Now, from out of the past, the NFL and the United Way are bringing you a special salute to all the teams and players and volunteers who have been part of the longest-running public service series, sports television. It started back in 1973 when another Cowboy quarterback brought you the story of Gay LeVon, a child who survived critical heart surgery. And over the years, more than 350 players have shown you how the United Way is working in towns and cities all across the nation. The 10 years that the series has run, United Ways have raised over $14 billion. And each year, those funds reach more than 37,000 health and human care agencies and services. This year, as we present a retrospect of the best of the series and some of the new stars of the NFL, we hope you will be watching. So that we can say thanks, because thanks to you, it works for all of us. United Way. The preceding message was brought to you by the National Football League. Three wide receivers are in for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Six men in the secondary, the Chicago Bears, on a big third down for Tampa Bay from their own 43 yard line. It is third and eight. And you can see that they are only one for seven today, converting on third down. The Bears are doing quite well. Goldstein is 2-4-8 in passing. Avoids the rush and completes a wobbly pass to Carter out to midfield at short of the first down. Making the hit was Walt Williams, number 43, and Carter must be tired of seeing Walt Williams around the ball every time it comes to him. Well, he stopped him, too. He made no progress after catching the ball. Because sometimes it's a little tough on a receiver. You're concentrating on catching it, and you can't get your momentum going. But the Bucks are going to play it safe. Apparently, they're going to punt the ball with about a half a yard to go for a first down. 
The ball at midfield. It's fourth and a little under a yard, and Garcia in the punt standing at his own 35. Seven to three ball game. I got to take the percentage call there. Jeff Fisher dropped immediately. Good tackle downfield by Dwayne Osteen, number 44. As soon as Fisher had the ball, Osteen had him. And so the Bears have first down at their own 12-yard line with one minute and eight seconds remaining. And, of course, coming up in uh, that time, since we're playing time, we will have all of the scores and stories. Brent Nerv with scores and highlights from around the National Football League, a report from the U.S. Open, where later today Yvonne Lindell Meet Jimmy Connors. So stay with us at halftime. Let's see how the Bears uh, do it now. They're down deep in their own territory. There's plenty of time to go downfield, a minute and eight. Let's see if they play it safe or go for it. McMahon is 7 of 12 for 98 yards, and he will throw on first down. Up the middle to Moorhead. Nice catch. Moorhead has a first down after the 25 yard line. Number 53, Hugh Green. Made the initial contact, and Scott Brantley, his linebacking teammate number 52, was there. First down for the Bears. They're in a two-minute drill, 49 seconds and counting. Man has time. Can't find an open man. Now oh. almost picked off, intended for Marjoram, and it is Mike Washington, number 40, who nearly had another Bucks interception. 39 seconds on the clock as it is stopped with the incompletion. Willie Galt is now coming in the game, number 83, and he'll, of course, bring in the call for, for Jim McMahon, which comes from the bench from Ed Hughes, who is the offensive coordinator. Jim McMahon told us uh, on Friday, uh, as we look at his stats, that uh, he did feel the pressure to perform last week after a preseason in which he was not exactly dazzling. He acknowledged that, said, yes, I wanted to do well last week, and I should have done better. Second down. For Galt, Galt had to come back to the ball. He has a first down, but he has stopped at the 45-yard line, covered there by Andy Hawkins and Johnny Holt. Well, Johnny Holt was playing way deep. He wasn't going to let him get behind him uh, with 30-some seconds to go. You can see he's 12 yards off. And let's see where Galt, when he ends up 10 yards down the field, Holt is still about 10 yards off. He goes down, just stops and turns in, and Holt comes up to make the tackle. But you can't blame... Johnny Holt for that kind of coverage. He does not want Willie Galt to get behind him with 30 seconds to go. You have to depend on linebacker help in that kind of a situation. Bears took a timeout with 32 seconds on the clock and getting back to our conversation with Jim McMahon, you know, he took the blame for the two passes that I think most everybody else would say were not his fault. The drops by uh, Moorhead and Bashnagel last week in the, in the game against Atlanta, but he said, you know, I didn't throw a good pass to Brian and, and I take the blame for that. He, he just wants so badly to do well and there's no question that uh, last week was an important start of this sophomore season for him, and his numbers were outstanding. 20 of 29, had himself a fine afternoon, rolling up 254 yards and a touchdown. Had the one interception. He said, I should never have thrown that ball. But, uh, we know that there's a lot of fine football ahead for this young man. I suppose the questions will linger about whether he can get the ball deep. And, uh, of course, he's confident he can throw the long ball. We only had one example of it so far today. It did come up a little short, intended for Galt. The one that was uh, knocked away by Washington turned into an interception. Dave stalls in defensively for the Buccaneers. McMahon has lots of time directing traffic, trying to find an open man. Now he's going to run with the ball, trying to get the first down before he goes out. With 20 seconds on the clock. Out of bounds at the 46-yard line of Tampa Bay. Well, the Bucks are using just a three-man rush as they normally do and dropping everybody off. McMahon easily got out of the pocket, and there were people that popped open all for, the, for five or six seconds, but when you're running around, you can't see them all. They may be running on one side of the field, and you're running the other way, but he is so good at getting out of the pocket and staying away from the rush, and as long as Tampa Bay uses a three-man rush, whether it's Selman or not, or David Logan, when you have five or six blockers on him, it's pretty tough for them to get there. He is short of the first down. It'll be second and one, 20 seconds on the clock. Out of the eye formation. Blitz. The, action, the blitz is on. He dumps it off nicely to Peyton. Peyton gets away from one man, is out of bounds at the 38-yard line. 
A Bears first down with 13 seconds on the clock. They had a good rush on him that time with a blitz. Andy Hawkins, number 59, leading the charge. It's one of their few blitzes. They rushed three rushmen plus one linebacker, and they happened to go right into a screen pass, and that's just exactly what the Bears would want you to do because they were screening right where Hawkins was leaving from. So they're getting down with one more completion. They can possibly uh, kick a field goal. Hawkins, 59, coming from the outside, but the screen is right over to, to the area where he came from, and Peyton, with another pass reception, gets away from number 20, Neil Colsey, and is finally knocked out of bounds right there. Stop the clock. Bears use another timeout here with 13 seconds remaining in the half. They've got one to call as uh, McMahon talks things over with Mike Ditka, Ed Hughes. McMahon is uh, an interesting young man. He had a terrible accident when he was six years old. He, he uh, was trying to cut a thing on his belt with a fork and it jammed up and hit him in the eye and, and did some damage to his cornea so he can't see beyond about 80 or 90 yards, but he says in football it doesn't really matter too much. I guess it doesn't, but he came back from that, has to wear dark glasses all the time because of the, of the light that goes into his eyes from bright sunshine. So it's very tender, and it's something he has to be very careful of, but in a football game, he says he kind of just forgets about it. Just that once in a while, he has a little pain from the light, but it doesn't seem to hurt his football. Jim McMahon out of BYU was an all-around athlete in high school. Well, we're close to halftime, and we'll be keeping you up to date with all of the activity around the NFL today. Brenton Irv with scores and highlights. And, of course, a special update report on the upcoming men's singles final at Flushing Meadow in New York. Jimmy Connors and Yvonne Lindell. First down for the Bears. 13 seconds on the clock. They come out in the wide throw set with Suey and Peyton. Dash Nagel and Galt, the wide receivers. Peyton out of the backfield is hit by Hawkins immediately. Picked up about five. A little extra rough stuff now going on between Logan and Keith Van Horn. A little pushing and shoving here just to add a little spice to the game. Six seconds on the clock. And Mike Ditka out there uh, with other members of the Bears coaching staff saying, come on, guys, keep it going here. Now, timeout has been called. It would be about a 40 about a 47 yard field goal or 48 yard field goal for Bob Thomas. He's uh, capable of hitting that distance and he does have the wind behind him. Bob Thomas, who was near perfect during the exhibition season, only missed one during the exhibition season. He's standing there right at the 40 yard line as his team huddles to his left. He's got his uh, spot and it would be a 50 yard try from there. Former Notre Damer, remember he kicked that big field goal in the Cotton Bowl a few years ago? I think when they beat Houston, wasn't it? Uh, He's had some big ones in the pros as well. Yes, he has. What a half for Walter Payton, 94 yards. Well, it'll be 50 passing. yards now. Nine yard, 36 yards on nine carries rushing. 50-yard try for Bob Thomas. Ashnagel will hold and is moving along the line. Flags everywhere. Both teams pointing at each other and saying it was him. No, it was him. No, it was him, ref. Now, a Tampa Bay defensive lineman did jump off sides. Then the Bears moved. The, the important thing is if he made contact when he came across, if he made contact, then we'll go against Tampa Bay. Well, the Bears won the finger pointing here. Because, yes, uh, that's a big one. That's a big one. Five yards make a big difference in this field goal attempt. Referee Ben Greif figured uh, the Bears and pointed Coach better. Defense that made is a big, that's a big play to the 28-yard line. That makes it a little easier for Thomas. 45-yard try, still six seconds on the clock. There's none elapsing during that infraction. <laughs> now the whistle again, just as Thomas let it fly. Let's see who gets the call this time. Hilgenberg was knocked on his backside as soon as the ball was snapped or slightly before. It looks right like this guard was with be a false start. False start against the Bears. So now it's going to go back five yards. <laughs> They'll be back where they began. This is taking yeah. longer to finish in a basketball game. Yeah. What's Bob Thomas thinking? He wants to get that kick off. Put six seconds back on the clock. 
He got a practice try. You can hear the referee Dreith uh, saying, let's go back to the original time remaining, six seconds, because again, we had an infraction. So no time should have elapsed since that uh, penalty was whistled before the ball was snapped. There should be six seconds on the clock. Well, we'll see if uh, Ben gets his way. There it is. That gets this some applause. There is Bob Thomas. Thomas was all by himself while the team huddled off over to the side. They just let the kicker meditate and think for himself. Nobody talks to him. Well, here he is back where he started. 50-yard try. He's had one practice shot from 45. It's good. A 50-yard field goal for Bob Thomas. Now he can uh, laugh and smile. He had to wait a long time for his chance, and it didn't bother him. He put it right between the uprights, and the Bears have taken the lead by a score of 10 to 3. A young man who went through a lot of aches and pains last year when the Bears cut him in favor of John Rivetto. He was picked up by Detroit, then cut by Detroit, and came back to the Bears and was near perfect. And there he is, number 16, Bob Thomas, one of the premier kickers, the all-time field goal kicker in Chicago Bear history. That's what football's all about, isn't it? 50-yard field goal for Bob Thomas. And with one second now to play in this first half, a 10-3 football game for the Chicago Bears. And uh, obviously lots of football remaining in a one touchdown margin. Neither team able to get a lot of offense going until near the end of the second period. When the Bucks had the interception by Brown, the bomb to Gerald Carter, the field goal by Capice, and then the Bears responding with the bomb to Walter Payton. And Thomas's field goal. A squib kickoff mishandled by Obradovich. And it goes out of bounds as the half comes to a close. Well, there's Bob Thomas feeling pretty good about things right now. He got a good kickoff off that uh, Obradovich was unable to do anything with. He has kicked a 50-yard field goal to open a touchdown margin over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I would say overall this had to be a defensive uh, first half. I think the key decision that's going to be made in the locker rooms as far, especially as the Buccaneers are concerned, is whether they're going to come back with Jerry Goldstein or whether they're going to go to Jack Thompson as they did last week. That's the dilemma that John McKay faces as he goes into the locker room because the offense really did not overall move the ball with the exception of that one play, which was a, a good play by the Buccaneers, but uh, because of a slippage of a bare player, you know, they didn't have any real drives going, and I think this is where McKay has to make his decision. What do you think? What do you think he'll do? Well, I, uh, I'm going to predict that, uh, that we'll see Thompson before the end of the game. How's that for a waffly prediction? I would go along with that. I think, uh, <laughs> I think that he'll do the same thing. I agree with you. For the Bears, it's Jim McMahon. The big play, of course, an individual super effort by Walter Payton as he caught a pass that should have been 30 or 40 yards. He took it all the way on his individual ability, put the Bears on top, and the momentum seemed to swing towards the end of the first half. And a key area of the game, I think, was when the minute to play, the Bears had the ball on their own 12 with a 7-3 lead, decided to go for the marbles. Rather than play it out, they threw a pass on first down, moved it out, went down, and got the field goal. I think that is a, uh, that's a very good point. That is a, uh, perhaps a symbol of uh, Mike Ditka offensive thinking, uh, his aggressive style, his, his uh, decision to say, hey, let's, let's go for it here. Let's not play it safe. Let's try and move the ball up the field and, and get some more points. And he has the confidence that his young team can do it. Too. Well, that's the kind of a person he is. That's why George Hallis hired him. He's an aggressive, offensive-minded player. When he played, he was that way. When he, when he played, he was an aggressive football player. He always wanted to go on fourth one. He always wanted to throw the ball. He always wanted to, to make some action, make football fun and entertaining. Too many years, the Chicago Bears have been a, a team that has been run on first and second and throw on third. Well, the Bears lead so far, but there's 30 minutes still to go. From Soldier Field in Chicago, it's 10 to 3 Bears. CBS.
CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by AC Delco. General Motors Corporation, AC Delco is the way to go. Federal Express, when you have a package that absolutely positively has to be there overnight. Federal Express. And by a tool for modern times, the IBM Personal Computer. We're beginning our descent into the Dallas-Fort Worth Airport. Good. This is an American right. Airlines flight attendants this class, a like training program so selective only one out of 200 applicants are accepted. Here, Shelly Hughes learned to give you the best flight possible, and she'll continue to receive even more training. We taught Shelly a lot, but some things we didn't have to teach her. Happy birthday. We are American Airlines, doing what we do best. When you're looking for quality products at extra special prices, look no further than True Value Hardware Store's Tool Value of the Month. In September, it's the Master Mechanic Professional Rivet Gun with an assortment of rivets for just $4.99. This high-quality tool will help you repair loose gutters, leather handbags, and more. And during September, this Master Mechanic Professional Rivet Gun with Rivets is only $4.99 while supplies last. Look for the Two Value of the Month banner at participating True Value Hardware Stores and Home Center. Shooting on location is a real challenge. But how good a picture is can depend on how good the paper is it's printed on. That's why the photographers I know use Kodak paper. Not just for the pictures we earn our living with, but for personal pictures, like these. Because what a picture says on the back says a lot about how it looks on the front. Kodak paper. The only way to be sure you get it is to ask for it at a retailer displaying this new sign. CBS Sports is the place to be in September as the best in tennis pursue America's most coveted tennis titles as the U.S. Open continues. And every Sunday through the Super Bowl, we'll bring you the great teams, the great players, the excitement of the National Football League. And the tradition continues with NCAA football. You'll see the nation's top teams in regional action, plus a primetime special. Notre Dame against Miami, all here in September on CBS Sports. Welcome back to New York, and Irv, the Bears finally shook Walter Payton loose again. Boy, it's really a delight to see him run, isn't it? Here it came. Jim McMahon was running a fake end around, and off of it, they had frozen Payton against the linebacker. Now watch the stutter step against the cornerback. He freezes him, stays inside, outruns the safety man, and gets into the end zone. A 73-yard touchdown. That's the longest Peyton has been since 1980. Meanwhile, Green Bay and Pittsburgh are shooting it out. James Lofton again. He's caught three passes for 143 yards, two touchdowns of 71 and 72 yards. The Steelers had an extra point blocked in that game. Detroit and Cleveland are slugging it out. Alvin Hall just returned a punt 66 yards. Hippleton threw a touchdown pass to Norris. They are tied at 14 at the half there. The Giants in Atlanta. Many of you are enjoying this game. The Giants were up by 10. Then Atlanta kicked a field goal. For new coach Bill Parcells, a little bit different. And here they are going to Junior Miller, one of your favorite tight ends. Tight end, but playing the H-back position as a flanker this time. He's hit, caught the ball up. Mark Haynes hit him, and of course, uh, the ball was recovered by the Giants. What kind of a day is Butch Wolfolk having, though? Very frustrating day. In the first half, he had two personal fouls called on him, 30 yards in penalties to his team. Watch this action. He's going to have to cool off. Scott Bruner got the Giants on the board, going to Ernest Gray. That made it 10-0, but again, the Falcons have kicked a field goal, and now at the half, they trail it 10-3. Buffalo and Cincinnati, they are tied at three. They are at the half of that game. Washington and Philadelphia, and that is 7-3. They have started in the third quarter. Ron Jaworski's first pass from scrimmage. Ron never sees Mark Murphy in a safety position come over, takes this ball away, number 29, picking the ball off for the Redskins, setting up a scoring opportunity for his team. Jaworski wastes no time, this time going to Charlie Brown for a 12-yard touchdown, and the Redskins are in command in the third quarter, 7-3. They sure are. Now, the Dallas Cowboys and the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cardinals broke like they were going to simply dominate the Cowboys this afternoon. Watch Jim Hart and go to Roy Green, who beats a pair of Cowboy defenders, and that gave him a 7 to nothing lead. And the Cardinal defense was applying pressure like this. Danny White out of the shotgun was simply bowled over. Curtis Greer sacks him. And the Cowboys did not have a single first down in the opening quarter. And Tom Landry knew that just like last Monday night, 
he was going to have to come from behind. The Cardinals were even going for fake punts from their own 40-yard line. Eddie McGill from the first down. But just after that sequence, Dickerson with a big interception, and then the Cowboys went to work. Danny White hit Tony Hill at the one, then he handed off to Ron Springs. Springs got in for that touchdown. They scored again when White passed here to number 88, Drew Pearson, who angles in for the touchdown. And at the half right now, the Cowboys lead it 17 to 10. And Irv, we would be remiss if we did not mention the death of a good friend of ours, Buddy Young, who is an executive with the National Football League, a former great running back at Illinois. He was the most valuable player in a Rose Bowl, played in the NFL. But Irv, the key thing about Buddy, I don't think the people realize what a key factor he was in race relations in the National Football League. You know, Brent, there wasn't anybody in the league any closer to the players than Buddy Young, from the commissioner all the way down. If you had a problem, you can always call Buddy. He had a uh, responsive ear and could help you out with it, we're all going to miss him. We sure are. And all of us here at CBS Sports want to send along our condolences to his lovely wife, Geraldine, and their three fine children. And the NFL Today will continue on CBS after these messages from your local stations. We've got the touch. You at CBS. What happens when an ordinary housewife meets an extraordinary spy? Hand it to the man in the red hat. Bruce Boxleitner's The Spy in Trouble. Kate Jackson's The Adventurous Housewife. Right hand on the stick, left hand down on the throttle. Why? We're flying. Now, they're partners undercover as Scarecrow. Champagne. And Mrs. King, coming Mondays this fall. This is CBS. Tennis fans may feel a sense of deja vu when they look in on the men's finals at the U.S. Open later this afternoon on CBS. The big matchup at Flushing Meadow the same as a year ago. Jimmy Connors against Yvonne Lindell. Now first a look at how that one ended and then what they did yesterday to get back to the finals. Last year, the U.S. Open and Yvonne Lindell belonged to Jimmy Connors. Ah! Yvonne has had the whole year to think about losing that final. And yesterday, against Jimmy Arias, he earned the right to a rematch. Lindell has not lost a set in this Open. And Yvonne, can you keep it going? Well, I will have a very tough match tomorrow, no matter who I play. And uh, I don't care if I uh, lose a set or two as long as I win. Connors did not have a tough match yesterday. He swept away Bill Scanlon, shaking off an injured toe. Scanlon fell in straight sets. Today, it'll be tougher. It was a year ago. Connors and Lindell got into this exchange at the net. And Jimmy was unhappy about it. I don't mind playing the way that I'm used to playing. Uh, I'm going to be getting in there. I'm going to be very aggressive. And, uh, you know, he's going to have to pass me a lot. I'm probably going to have to pass him a lot. We're all both going to have to run down a lot of balls. And... Uh, probably kill each other in the meantime, but it's going to be fun. All right, Ben, you've been covering the Open for the last two weeks. Who do you like? You know, it's Jimmy's arena, the whole setting here in New York, Irv, and he'll take away Lindell's serve because he returns as well as anybody in the game. He will attack Lindell's strong forehand, but I think that Lindell is burning with a desire now to win his first major championship, and I really give him a bit of an edge. Okay, what about uh, Connor's injured toe? He's going in hurt. Well, we just checked out of Flushing Meadow, Irv, and Jimmy has warmed up earlier today, and there was no problem when he was out on the court. So apparently he got some ice on it right away last night, and it didn't freeze up on him overnight. We'll see what happens. Okay, thank you. <laughs> now let's send you back to the stadium and a game you're enjoying here on CBS, and we will do that right after these messages. Today, the most exciting new ideas in the hotel business come from Holiday Inn. The Holiday Inn is a better place to be. Now this is better. So much better. Meetings are better. A lot better. Satellite video conferencing. It lets you hold meetings at hundreds of Holiday Inn hotels at the same time. Innovations like this make us number one. We're number one, your worldwide host. First with what you want the most. Holiday Inn is a better place to be. 
Denerex shampoo and conditioner versus head and shoulders, regular formula. On this side, I can feel a tingling sensation. There's something going on up there. And this side, it's, there's not much happening. Look what you used. Well, this is the brand that I usually use, and this is uh, Denerex. Each shampoo has one medicine for dandruff. Denerex adds an extra anti-itch medicine, and Denerex adds conditioner, too. My hair is a lot more manageable. Feels nice. Goodbye, head and shoulders. Hello, Denerex. Get Denerex, dandruff shampoo that conditions, too. If you're prospecting for lower fuel bills, strike it pink with the Great Pink Rush rebate. Add at least 10 rolls of Owens Corning insulation to your attic now and get a $10 rebate from Owens Corning. So rush on down and strike it pink. The Great Pink Rush ends September 25th. <laughs> 